Good afternoon. As all of you are aware, the Supreme Court today granted a review to the federal constitutional challenge to Proposition 8, uh, as well as one of the DOMA cases, uh, the Windsor case out of the Second Circuit, uh, out of the New York case. And I'll just say, um, while there are those that are disappointed in that they did not want cert to be granted in this case, and, and, and there are also those that were looking forward, including myself, to having marriages start here in City Hall this week. We cannot let that obscure the fact of the tremendous progress that has been made with respect to marriage equality over the course of the last decade. In 2000, Proposition 22 passed in this state by 60-40. And look at the progress that we have made on the issue during the course of how we have litigated this case over the course of the last nine years. Nine states and the District of Columbia now have marriage equality. Proposition 8 that passed here in 2008 lost, albeit, I mean, one only by a couple of points. And I think if it was on the ballot again, the result would be quite different. So while I share the disappointment of those that had hoped that marriages would start in City Hall this week, I am gratified and confident, very confident, that the Supreme Court, which is now going to be taking up the civil rights issue of our time, will reach the same result that the District Court did and the Ninth Circuit did, and will find that Proposition 8 unlawfully discriminates against gay and lesbian couples here in the state of California. And I can think of no better case for it to take up, if it is going to take up a case, than this case. And it is coming at a particularly opportune time, especially when you see the political landscape changing as it had. Just here in this last election, two more states, Maryland and Maine, had marriage equality, and this time, three, winning at the ballot box. So we are gratified and look forward to making our argument before the United States Supreme Court about why Proposition 8 needs to be struck down. And hopefully, we can then begin marriages here in this building and throughout the state of California as quickly as uh, possible. We just got off a, uh, a conference call with other members of our, of our, uh, of our team, David Boys and Ted Olson, with, on a national media call. And I can tell you that the, the confidence level of all of us is high. And we look forward to making our case before the U.S. Supreme Court about why the record that was developed in the district court was so strong. And I would like to remind everybody of that. If you go back and look at Judge Walker's uh, opinion in this case, after evaluating all the evidence, <clears throat> there could be no doubt whether you were a witness for our side or a witness for the other side. There was absolutely no dispute whatsoever that Proposition 8 unlawfully discriminated against gay and lesbian individuals here in the state of California. And the Ninth Circuit affirmed that decision. And we have every confidence based on that record that the Supreme Court will find similarly. And uh, we will be making those arguments when the court takes this case up in the spring. And we're confident that that, that view will prevail. And while this will be a little bit more of a delay, We've been litigating this case for nine years. <clears throat> We've seen the ups, the, down, the downs, the highs, and the lows. But I will tell you, that at least from my perspective, it is only a matter of time till we reach over that final hurdle. And I have every confidence that come the summertime, we'll once again be on the right side of history. And we can assure that uh, gay and lesbian couples here in the state of California <clears throat> can share in a celebration that will impact and finally bring to fruition uh, equal rights for everybody, not just here in the state of California, but throughout this country. And I'm very proud of the effort that our office has put in this case, standing alongside David Boys and Ted Olson and the AFER team uh, and the plaintiffs in the case to make sure that we bring this case up to the Supreme Court in a, in a, in a, in a timely and efficient manner. And we look forward to making our arguments. I know that there are others here that want to say a few words, but Terry Stewart, my chief deputy, who has been litigating this case alongside our team, I know wants to say a few words.
Thanks, Dennis, and thank you all for being here. Um, I would be lying if I didn't say I was a little disappointed. I was really hoping, I think many of you remember what it felt like both in 2004 and even more in 2008 when City Hall was filled with couples um, getting married. And it was really a, a combination of an awe-inspiring and kind of spiritual moment for many people because it was so long in coming. And then we were back at it again with this case. Um, but I agree with Dennis, we, we worked really hard to put on the best possible record in the trial court, and one that I think is gonna be very difficult for the Supreme Court to ignore or to kind of pull facts out of their ears when we have a record that addresses all the possible facts that could have any bearing on the case. Um, am I nervous? Yeah, we're nervous. Um, you'd never like to be waiting for the Supreme Court to decide something. But I am optimistic as well, and even though um, our sort of favorite outcome would have been to, to get a denial of cert and be able to go ahead and marry people, um, I think, you know, you have Ted Olson and David Boyce who are quite amazing advocates and you have a, um, a record with expert witnesses and lay witnesses who tell very compelling stories and really no record at all in support of any um, advantage or value that's served by denying marriage to same-sex couples. So it will be um, the fight of our lives. It's been the fight of our lives and we have another year to go or, or less and um, I think in the end of the day we'll prevail. I hope we will prevail in the way that Ted has always expected, which is a, a wide ruling that affects the entire nation. But if we don't, we will have a, a very strong fallback argument that the Ninth Circuit adopted, um, that our brief focused on, um, that at, it, it, Prop 8 in California, by stripping the title alone in a state that otherwise recognizes equality, just makes no logical sense. So we'll give the Supreme Court the full range of options, and there really aren't good arguments to the contrary. Um, and uh, in the end of the day, I'm confident that the court will, will get to our side one way or the other, broad or narrow, um, and, and I hope Ted is right on the broad. Thank you, Terry, and I think that's something I'd just like to emphasize, the complementary nature in which we have litigated this case alongside the uh, AFER team, uh, and that's a role that we will continue to play. Uh, Ted has always believed that uh, a broad argument is best. Uh, we will offer a complementary view, uh, which is more narrow, uh, and focus more on California and the impact of uh, Proposition 8 vis-a-vis -vis what uh, the, the right to marry that the California Supreme Court had previously granted. So um, we look forward to uh, continuing to play that role. But one thing that is clear is that the city family and <clears throat> folks here in San Francisco has, have been united in supporting our efforts over the course of the last uh, nine years through the entirety of the litigation and uh, political battles as well. And many of those individuals are uh, here today and I'd just like to give uh, some members of the city family an opportunity to say a few words because their support has been um, integral to I think building not only the political support that we've needed to continue this battle but also in terms of supporting the litigation that we've continued. So there are a number of individuals here that I'd like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even recognize. I'm she used, to, she, she used to be a city official. <laughs> it's my pleasure first to bring up the uh, great attorney general of the state of California who uh, was a steadfast backer of our efforts when she was here in city government but has continued that fight as our uh, state's chief law enforcement officer. And it's my pleasure to introduce our attorney general, Kamala Harris. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Dennis Herrera, our great city attorney who, as we know, um, is a national leader on this issue because he decided and took it upon himself and his office to put an incredible amount of effort and resources into making sure that the voice of justice would be heard. He, Terry Stewart, I just saw in the hallway, have been extraordinary. So thank you for your leadership as my city attorney. Thank, thank you. you. Um, it, this is a very significant day, obviously. The highest court in the land has decided to take up what will be one of the biggest uh, civil rights cases that this court could ever hear. And it comes down to a fundamental point. Um, are we a country that is true to its word and true to its spirit or not? This is a case about fundamental questions of fairness and equality. We in 1776 said we are all and should be treated as equals. And the fact that in these United States, created the way we were with that spirit, at this point in time, treats one group of people 
legally different than all others is outrageous. And so this court taking up cert on the Perry case is a very exciting time and we have to believe this court will do the right thing, which is give to these couples, these gay and lesbian couples, the opportunity to marry, the opportunity to exercise an expression of love, and the opportunity to have dignity and live in a way that makes clear the point that these United States stand for the principles that we all are equal and we will be treated that way. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Attorney General. I know we have the President of the Board of Supervisors, uh, David Chu. Thank you, Dennis, and thank you to our Attorney General. I'd like to defer to uh, several of my colleagues on the board for comments, but I just want to state briefly, first of all, uh, I want to thank our legal team uh, with the City Attorney's Office, who is leading the forefront of the fight uh, with the national team uh, on what is the civil rights fight of our generation. And I stand here as a straight, church-going member of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. With my straight and LGBT colleagues, we are united reflecting a united San Francisco and reflecting, I think, a California that wants to ensure that our Supreme Court does the right thing. We are optimistic, we hold our breath, and we look forward to that moment. Thank you. Our treasurer, Jose Cisneros, who has been there uh, every step of the way supporting our efforts. Jose. Thank you, Dennis. You know, this announcement today tells me that this battle is far from over. We have to stay vigilant, we have to stay engaged, we have to let our voices be heard, and now we have to make sure that the Supreme Court of the United States hears our message, which is that everyone deserves to be treated equally, fairly, and the same under the laws of this state and this country. And personally, I'll say that my partner of 21 years and myself look forward to the day when we'll be able to marry again here in California. I'm um, very proud to have other members of the board here who um, I know want to say a few words, and I'm happy to have them there. Here, some of them used to be deputies in the city attorney's office, and they had a role in, in helping us in this battle since it's been going on for as long as it has. Uh, Supervisor Scott Wiener from District 8. Thank you, Dennis. And first of all, I just want to uh, thank uh, Dennis Rera for his inspirational leadership. It's been almost a decade now. Uh, since we started uh, this fight in San Francisco. And uh, Dennis, uh, also a straight guy, has been just the most amazing straight ally you could ever imagine. And I am uh, deeply grateful on behalf of myself and, and my uh, many, many LGBT constituents who, uh, who rely on his leadership. I also, when I walked in today, I was reminded how ironic it is that this is happening on a Friday afternoon, because if you come in on a Friday afternoon, there's usually six, eight, 10, 12 couples at a time getting married in the rotunda of City Hall, and this uh, today is no different. And I very much look forward to the day when I'm coming back from lunch on a Friday afternoon, and uh, there are uh, LGBT couples uh, there as well. Um, I, uh, I am optimistic that we're going to win at the Supreme Court, um, and I uh, have confidence in that court that we're going to do it. But you know what? If we don't, then we're going to do it the old-fashioned way and do it democratically. We're going to win this fight one way or the other, period, end of story. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. Uh, my pleasure to introduce David Campos, a supervisor from District 9. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be in this amazing company. I, I do think that folks like our city attorney, our attorney general, uh, are uh, honorary members of the LGBT community. I think I can say that. Uh, but let me say this, whatever happens at the Supreme Court, that decision will be historic. And the question is, is whether or not the Supreme Court chooses to be on the right side or on the wrong side of history. And uh, our hope is that they do the right thing and that they do choose to be on the right side of history. But the fact is that whether it happens because of this case or whether it happens down the road, same-sex marriage is going to be a reality throughout this country. It's already a reality in many parts of this country. And this is a situation where the public, the people, are far ahead of the courts. Let's hope that the courts heed the guidance of the people of this country who believe in fairness. But whether the courts do or not, 
at the end of the day, there will be equality for every member of this society, including every member of our community, the LGBT community. I represent uh, District 9, and in District 9, there is this couple that's standing here who live in the Portola, who have every right to be, uh, to be given equal recognition, equal opportunity under the law. Let's hope the Supreme Court does the right thing, but if they don't do the right thing, the people will make sure that the right thing happens. Thank you. Thank you, David. We're also uh, very fortunate to have Supervisor from District 5, uh, Supervisor Christine Olagi. I just uh, wanted to mention that, again, that it's a pity that in uh, 2013 in California we're still fighting for the right uh, to marry whoever it is we want to marry, regardless of gender. Um, and getting through the hurdles of, I believe it was in the 60s, around race, race and marriage uh, was something. So it's just uh, really unfortunate that we're here still fighting this fight. Uh, when countries, as I mentioned once before, like Spain, one of the most Catholic countries in the world, uh, already have the right to uh, marry. So uh, that being said, I would also like to be beyond this issue of gay marriage because there's so many other issues that um, members of our LGBTQ community continue to confront around bullying in the schools. A lot of young people still have to contend with that. Transgender community, they're still one of the most highly unemployed people in this, uh, populations in this country. There's a lot of uh, issues around class and race that still uh, confront our community within our community and outside of it. So I believe that once we are able to secure this issue in California and throughout this uh, country, then we can start dealing with those issues that confront economic, class, and racial justice. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor uh, Olagi. I think it's particularly appropriate as now we head to this nation's highest court to continue this battle that we have uh, a representative of someone who has been a leader when it comes to marriage equality and every other issue that impacts the lives of ordinary Americans. We know that speaker, always be my speaker, Nancy Pelosi has been a leader, not just here in San Francisco, but on issues that impact people across this country. And while I know she's disappointed that she can't be here to speak to individuals directly, I'm very grateful that she sent her district representative, Dan Bernal, to uh, say a few words on her behalf. Thank you, Dennis. Leader Pelosi is in Washington dealing with the fiscal cliff negotiations, but she did ask me to come and share her statement with you today about the announcement from the Supreme Court. But also first to thank City Attorney Dennis Herrera and his great team at the City Attorney's Office, including Terry Stewart, for his leadership, their leadership, and your commitment to justice for everyone. And also to the advocates in California who've been working so hard on this issue, particularly the National Center for Lesbian Rights, Kate Kendall and Shannon Minter, Equality California, too numerous to mention. Um, so while she could not be here, she asked, Leader Pelosi asked me to share her statement with you. With the Supreme Court's decision, marriage equality will finally have its day in the highest court of the land. Americans will hear whether inequality and discrimination are consistent with the high standards and deepest values of our Constitution. We remain confident that the justice's ruling will fall on the side of civil rights and discard DOMA and Prop 8 in the dustbin of history. From the start, Republicans have known that DOMA is unconstitutional, and that's why Republicans have tried to pass legislation to prohibit judicial review of this disgraceful law. Speaker Boehner's legal team repeatedly failed to convince the courts to keep denying basic rights to American families, all while wasting nearly $1.5 million in taxpayer funds. Now, the Supreme Court will decide whether Edie Windsor deserved to face pe a penalty of hundreds of thousands of dollars after her partner's four decades passed away. We believe Ms. Windsor and couples like hers will see justice done in this case. By taking up the Prop 8 case, the Supreme Court will have the opportunity to make a strong statement that laws in California and nationwide must not target the LGBT community unfairly and that families across our state and our country deserve fair and equal treatment under the law. We have now reached a landmark moment in the history of civil rights in our nation. Let's end discrimination and ensure equality for all of America's families. Let's get this over with and on to the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. And I think one thing that you've heard from virtually every speaker is how, you know, we can't ever separate the issue of equality from the individuals that it impacts on the ground. The thousands of 
uh, lesbian and gay individuals here in the state of California who haven't been able to pursue their lifelong dream of being with the one that they love. And there are organizations that represent those individuals, and I can't thank them enough for standing along side of us. I know we have Representative John Lewis and Stuart Gaffney here from the Freedom and Mary. Thank you very much for being here. And I know that Dan mentioned a couple of other groups. And they are the individuals that really matter here. The, the individuals that they represent are the ones that we're all fighting this battle for. So I can't thank them enough for their attendance here today. We look forward to making our case before the Supreme Court this spring. And like I said earlier, we're confident in the result and the result will be marriage equality for everybody here in the state of California. So thanks very much. I'm happy to take any questions that any of you have. Could you talk about what your office's involvement is going to be considering the court has called into question our state Supreme Court's decision to allow the yes and a to even stand in because you and the governor refused to have any involvement in this case? Um, uh, it is my intention, which I've, I've expressed right after we heard that the court was going to take this up um, to lead the 50 attorneys general who are willing to join us in filing an amicus before the United States Supreme Court to reaffirm the point that we have made throughout this process, which is that if we're going to be true to the ideals of our Constitution, we will allow gay and lesbian couples to marry. And, you know, I was just talking to Dan Bernal about it. It was back in February of 2004. And I, I remember that because I, I came to City Hall to marry some couples. And it's been a long time. And what we've talked about is over the course of now over 5,000 days, couples in California have been denied the, the opportunity to legally express their love and be married. And in those 5,000 plus days, babies have been born, Family members have, have passed away. And so time is important, and the significance of the passage of time cannot be lost on this. So not only are we going to urge the court to do the right thing, we are going to urge the court to do it swiftly. Well, I mean, the, the court has been clear that on the question presented in Perry, it's a question of equal protection under the 14th Amendment. Um, another question that it will also face, actually, will be a standing issue. And the st I think that the standing um, question is the weaker of the two, and, um, and, and that's our initial analysis. Well, I think that, you know, what has been clear is there has been <clears throat> great religious support for the concept of equality throughout this state. And I understand you're focusing on uh, the Archbishop, but I, I can't uh, underestimate the support that uh, clergy from a variety of faiths have given for the, uh, the issue of equality and have supported uh, the battle that we have all fought, fought for marriage equality and the message that I would deliver to anybody is that uh, in, in this state and across this country is that marriage equality is the civil rights issue of our time. It is time to put discrimination against anybody behind us and move forward that we, so that we have equality for all. Steve. Well, I think, um, you know, I think it, as you look at it, the issue, uh, there's certainly, we're, we are going to deal with the fundamental issues in this case, in both cases. Um, we had hoped and we had argued that um, CERT should be denied. We didn't see any reason to step in, particularly in light of the Ninth Circuit's uh, great ruling, which would have ensured that thousands of Californians were getting married here uh, this week 
but they have taken it up. They have taken up the, the Doma case, the Windsor case out of the Second Circuit, and uh, our case at the same time. So those issues uh, are going to be fully developed. How they interrelate and how they look at those, we can't predict, and I'm not going to pretend to, uh, pretend to predict. But I, when I look at how much progress we've made over the course of the last decade, and we see the trends of how things are going, and here we just had three more states uh, at the ballot box here recently. I'm very, very confident that uh, we are gonna proceed along a path which ensures that we have marriage equality. And the court, while obviously uh, deciding these cases on the law and the facts, is mindful uh, of what is going on across the country, and I'm sure that they are taking notice of that as well. I'm sorry? Any thoughts on how the vote will go? Whether well, I'm not going to make a prediction. We don't make predictions, but uh, we are going to make our arguments uh, uh, to the whole court. Uh, we are going to make our arguments to the whole court, and as you can see, sometimes conventional wisdom goes out the window. I mean, I can tell you right now, when people were looking at um, the Affordable, Affordable Care Act, that there were not many people that would have predicted that Justice Roberts would come down where he came down. So um, we are going to make our arguments. There are going to be a variety of arguments that are made. Ted Olson has made it very, very clear that he's going to make a very broad argument. Uh, we are going to play a complementary role and give the court an alternative view of how the decision can be more narrow vis-a-vis -vis what came out of the Ninth Circuit. Uh, and we are uh, hopeful that when you, if you look at that panoply of arguments that uh, will be made, that we'll be able to attract votes from both wings of the court. And we will be making those arguments uh, strongly, and we're hopeful that's going to be uh, convincing to folks that fall along the philosophic entirety of the court. I think Dennis' point about Justice Roberts' vote on affordable health care, but I think a lot of people would have told you it's going to be five to four. I'll so, take five. So. <laughs> I got that one from Terry. I, I can't predict. I, 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 I join with Dennis's comments. I can't predict. I mean, but truly, I'll take five. Um, the bottom line is, is let's just do the right thing, and then we can count the votes and do the analysis later. I, you know, I mean, but just to, to give you a little bit more, I, you know, some would say Kennedy is going to be the swing vote. We'll see. Um, you know, but then there's the Texas case before that might predict that he wouldn't be the swing vote. So. I, you know, there's, there's all of us who speculate, and then there are those who know. And, and, and we're at this point speculating. Well, I said to Kamala, when you asked that to Dennis, I'll take five, I'll take six, I'll take seven, I'll take eight, or I'll take nine. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't think they know, to be honest with you. I think um, they're still trying to figure it out. It took them a long time to decide whether they were going to take either case. Um, either, you know, which DOMA case and, and whether and, and whether they'd take ours. And so clearly they're wrestling with it. And, and I think they will be listening to the arguments and reading the briefs carefully. And there will be some heavy hitter amici. And, you know, you got Ted and David. So I think, you know, we're going to have to give it our best shot advocacy wise. And I even have friends who think we could get some of the justices that you would you know, in, in your rational speculation, if you will, probably predict we wouldn't. So I'm hopeful that we will get more than a 5-4, that we will get a, um, a bigger majority. But, but uh, I'll take a win, whatever form it comes in. No, not at all. I mean, that's, it's exactly how we handle this case in the Ninth Circuit. Uh, and the court made a more narrow ruling. We, we make complimentary arguments all the time in cases that we bring, and I see absolutely no conflict uh, whatsoever. Ted has made quite clear that he wants to go broad, and, and I, I understand that. We have a role to play, and we'll be making a complimentary argument, but I don't see any conflict whatsoever. Correct. I'm sorry, say it again. No, 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 not at all. But, I mean, he's been, always been very clear as to the approach that he was going to make uh, in, in this case. So, no, he, he wasn't making predictions uh, either. We'll take two more questions. I 
I mean, I, I wouldn't say that at this point. I mean, I'm just talking about we're early on and we're going to develop our litigation strategy. But historically, in this case, um, we have made sure that our arguments were complementary and um, that we worked together to make the best possible argument uh, at the Ninth Circuit um, in terms of how we conducted the trial. We made sure that our responsibilities were divided so that we supported each other. Uh, so we will be doing the same thing in terms of devising legal strategies as we move forward at the Supreme Court. Last question. <laughs> Answer, but um, I won't be arguing, I don't think. Uh, usually the court has one advocate per side, and Ted will be arguing for the plaintiff's side, but I will be there mooting him and giving him whatever support I can and uh, hopefully sitting at council table to watch the amazing advocacy. All right. Great. Thank you very much.